Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page wingsofarrow.in. Hi guys, today we are going to see compressible flow, few solved objective questions. First question. A corrected design convergent divergent nozzle working at an design loaded is always isentropic, always choked, never choked and never isentropic. So this explanation for a divergent portion will be acted as nozzle only if the flow is supersonic for that it is must to be choked. So right answer is option B. Next question, a citation A, in a supersonic nozzle with a sonic condition at the throat, any reduction of downstream pressure will not be felt at the inlet of the nozzle. Reason, the distance caused downstream of the supersonic flow travels at sonic velocity which cannot be propagated upstream by the Mach cone. So here what happens in a supersonic nozzle with a sonic condition at the throat by reduction of the downstream pressure would not be failed in the inlet of the nozzle. So the, the A is the reason of the R which has been given. So the right option is option A. If a bullet is fired in a standard air at 15 degrees centigrade at the Mach angle of 30 degree. The velocity of the bullet will be the following options has been given. Here comes the solution. Mach angle we know the formula is sine alpha equals to 1 by Mach so alpha is given and from here we can find the Mach number and from C we know that formula is root over gamma RT substitute the value of gamma is 1.4 r is 287 and t is 273 plus 15 degree we are going to need to convert in kelvin so we are getting as 340 meter per second substitute that value in the formula that is mach number equals to v by c from there we can get v equals to c by sine alpha that is instead of mach we can write that 1 by sine alpha Substituting the value we get as 680 meter per second. So from here our right option is option D. While measuring the velocity of air rho equals to 1.2 kg per meter cube. The difference in the stagnation and the static pressures of the pitot static tube was found to be 380 pascal. The velocity at that location in meter per second is there are four sets of options. Let's see the solution. Here are the given data: the density rho equals to 1.2 kg per meter cube and the difference of the stagnation and the static pressure is 380 pascal. So recalling the formula that is P0 equals to P plus half rho v square. So from here we can write P0 minus P that is del P equals to half rho v square. Here by substituting the value of the given data that is 380 pascal that is change in pressures and rho is 1.2 and from there we can find the value of velocity by substituting we get as v equals to 25.17 meter per second. So from here we can know that the right answer is answer D. In isentropic flow between two points, the stagnation, the pressure and the stagnation temperature may vary. Pressure would decrease in the direction of the flow. Pressure and the stagnation temperature would decrease with an increase in velocity. Pressure, stagnation temperature and the stagnation density would remain constant throughout the flow. So remember, in this isentropic flow always the temperature remains same that means temperature cannot vary that is stagnation temperature or rather we can say a stagnation entropy so our right option is option d 
where it is mentioned the stagnation temperature as well as stagnation density will remain same or constant. For adiabatic expansion with friction through a nozzle, the following remains constant. Entropy, static enthalpy, stagnation enthalpy and stagnation pressure. So for this you remember that for an adiabatic expansion within friction through a nozzle, here always the stagnation enthalpy remains same. So right option is option C. So which of the following is a proper for a normal shock wave? Uh, reversible, irreversible isentropic occurs in a converging tube. So our right option is this normal shock wave or oblique shock wave both are irreversible process. So our right option is option B. In a normal shock wave in a gas, the upstream shock is supersonic, upstream flow is subsonic, downstream flow is sonic, both downstream flow and the upstream flow are supersonic. This is a very easy question. Let's see the answer with the simple diagram. So this is a formula diagram for a normal shock wave. Here is the explanation of normal shock wave. It can happen only in the supersonic you can see where the upstream is always greater than 1. So from here we can come to a conclusion that our right option is option A because upstream shock is always supersonic. Next question. In a normal shock in a gas the stagnation pressure remains the same on both the side of the shock. The stagnation temp density remains the same on both the side of the shock. The stagnation temperature remains the same on both the side of the shock. The Mach number remains the same on both the side of the shock. So for this we can see the diagram again. So here are the Mach number. This is a Mach 2 that is a behind the shock wave and from here we can analyze that what are the Mach numbers we can see the temperature the stagnation temperature remains same static pressure static temperature and static density increases behind the shock wave so from here we can come to conclusion the right answer is option C where the stagnation temperature is always remains same on both the side ahead and behind the shock wave here comes the next question. In a perfect gas having a ratio of specific heat has 1.4, what is the strength of the normal shock wave with the upstream Mach number equals to 5.0? These are the following options. Let's see the solution. Here comes the strength of normal shock wave. We have to remember the pressure rise by the upstream pressure. So we have been given that the Mach number and the gamma value that is ratios of specific heat that is 1.4 we can directly substitute in the given formula that is 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 into m1 square minus 1 by simplifying substituting in this following uh, equation we can get the strength of normal shock equals to 28 so the right option is option B the 28 next question a shock a normal shock wave always makes a supersonic flow of incompressible fluid subsonic but an oblique shock wave may not ensure the subsonic flow after the shock then reason is a normal shock wave reduces the stagnation pressure and the stagnation enthalpy considerably whereas the loss at oblique shock wave is minimized see according to me the statements we can see is we have seen the statements from there we can see what is happening to the corresponding properties of Mach number pressure temperature so you must remember this and from here we can come to conclusion that statement A is right but statements R is completely wrong there is no reduction is stagnation temperature and the stagnation enthalpy along the section 
Which one of the following is correct for the tangential component of the velocities before and after an oblique shock wave? Unity, equal, unequal, none of the above. Let's recall this oblique shock wave. We can see here in this condition that mt1 equals mt2. That is a tangential component of the both are equal. So our right option is option B. Interaction of beta tube in a supersonic flow would produce normal shock wave at the tube nose, curved shock at the tube nose, normal shock at the upstream of the tube nose and the curved shock at the upstream of the tube nose. So you have to keep that in mind if in a beta study tube we are producing a supersonic flow obviously it will produce at the node itself that is a normal shock at the nose that is the right option is option a shock wave in nozzles would occur while turbines are operating at overload conditions at part load conditions above critical pressure ratio at all of design conditions keep that in mind the shock wave in the nozzle will occur while operating in at of design conditions the right option is option d at which locations of the converging and diverging nozzle does the shock boundary layer interaction take place converging portions throat inlet diverging portions so keep that in mind always it occurs in the diverging portions the boundary layer separation so our right option is option d thank you for watching this video if you have further inquiry or requested video drop down to our mail wings of arrow at the rate gmail.com don't forget to subscribe for more updates for the time being take care stay blessed inspired and fly high